The global vertical farming market was valued at 5.5 billion in 2020 and is projected to reach 19.8 billion by 2026. That's a compound annual growth rate of 25%. Let's explore its potential and whether it can revolutionize fresh produce, as many predict. We've heard it time and time again, the global population is predicted to reach 9.7 billion by 2050. And to feed everyone, it's estimated that global food production will need to increase by up to 70% in the next 30 years. Even with improvements in yield every year, that seems impossible using our current production system. We also need to ensure that our new production methods don't impact the problems of climate change and eliminate the worsening problem of crop failure. There is a growing consensus that we need to create a food system that uses less water and less chemicals while also producing a reliable yield. The pandemic has uncovered the vulnerabilities of our current supply system with border closures and disruptions to the supply chain limiting people's access to fresh food. One of the sectors that may play a pivotal role in the solution may be vertical farming. Some of the benefits are clear to see. Yields are typically higher, crops can be grown year round irrespective of weather conditions, and it uses vertical layers to be more efficient than traditional open field production. Over the course of this video, we'll explore the history, benefits, and limitations of this relatively new industry, and see if it deserves the title as the future of horticulture. So vertical farming, what is it? Vertical farming is the practice of producing food on vertically stacked layers. Instead of farming vegetables and other foods on a single layer, such as a field or a greenhouse, this method produces food on vertically stacked layers, commonly integrated into structures such as skyscrapers, shipping containers, or repurposed warehouses. These indoor spaces are tightly controlled to create the ideal growing environment. Temperature, light, humidity and nutrition are tracked and maintained to ensure consistent year-round growth. The objectives of vertical farms are to maximise yield in a limited growing space. Let's have a quick look at the history of vertical farming. Surprisingly, vertical farming has existed in some form or another since ancient times. The first known vertical farm prototype were the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. However, the term itself wasn't introduced until 1915 when George Ellis coined the term. And according to Vertical Farming Planet, Ellis's version of vertical farming revolved around using low-cost explosives to help farms grow underground. In 1991, Professor Dixon Desparrier envisioned the concept as it's widely known today. With his students, he set out to create a food production method that could reduce the carbon footprint and be closer to the end consumer. It took over nine years and nine different classes of students to create the idea of using a high-rise building exclusively for vertical farming. The concept was a 30-storey building that could feed up to 50,000 people. The original concept covered one city block, or five acres, but had the productivity of a 2,400-acre traditional farm. The blueprint of a commercial vertical farm was born. Let's explore some of the benefits of vertical farming. The advantages are numerous. Firstly, they have higher productivity in a much smaller space. Vertical farming on averages produces 240 times more crop yield while using 99% less land. And due to the optimized conditions, they can produce produce in a much shorter growing time. They also tend to use less water, with vertical farms using 95% less water than open field methods. Fresh produce is also much closer to where it's eaten. And this, according to some vertical farming advocates, improves the taste and with a higher nutritional value. Let's have a look at a few interesting vertical farm projects. Firstly, Oshi is a vertical farm growing a world famous variety of Japanese strawberry in its facility in New Jersey. Strawberry has two to three times the sweetness of a conventional US grown strawberry. Traditionally strawberries had to travel a long way to reach its market. Therefore to ensure safe transportation, the fruits were engineered to be resilient at the expense of quality and taste. Oshi has targeted flavour as its unique selling point and it refers to itself as the Tesla of strawberries. They are positioned to be a very premium produce item and they're very expensive compared to traditional strawberries. Eight strawberries will set you back $50 and you'll more than likely have to join the waiting list. Secondly, grown underground. One of the key benefits of vertical farming is that you can grow a huge amount of produce in small spaces. In the abandoned tunnels below London, growing underground is using the air raid shelters from World War II to create a very unconventional farm. Their vertical farm is using about 2.5 acres of underground tunnels which were built between 1939 and 1942. They are located 140 feet below ground. 
and the farm itself uses vertically stacked trays to cultivate a wide range of vegetables, microgreens and herbs. Thirdly, space food. NASA and SpaceX are looking for a sustainable way to grow and produce food that will effectively support life on Mars. Unlike traditional open field agriculture, vertical farming can grow and sustain plants in outer space. Apparently vertical farm units are ideal for colonization, whether it be on Mars or on the moon. Vertical farming isn't without its critics and there are a number of limitations that are yet to be fixed. It's worth remembering that the industry is still very much in its commercial infancy. Firstly, the viability of the business model. According to a report in 2017 from AgriList, only 27% of indoor vertical farms were turning a profit. This is due to the massive upfront investment costs to enter the space. It costs an estimated $4 million to open a commercially sized vertical farm of 30,000 square feet. This hasn't stopped venture capitalists pumping their money into the space. With Infarm raising $404 million and Aerofarm raising $238 million. However, the economics of the business model is still up for debate. While vertical farms enjoy the benefits of engineered optimal growing conditions, a 12 month growing cycle, the conditions themselves only allow for a limited number of crops to be grown commercially. Outside of cannabis, the most lucrative crops reported are tomatoes, strawberries, herbs, microgreens, saddle leaves and edible flowers. 2. The Environmental Impact A Cornell study stated that vertical farms have a substantially higher carbon footprint than traditional greenhouses. This is mainly due to its high dependence on artificial light. Traditionally, crops outside relied on natural sunlight, and while LED have decreased in price in recent years, it's still considerably more expensive. Critics have highlighted this, pointing to the inefficiency of replacing natural light with fossil fuel powered lights. 3. Basic Science Even though vertical farming is the buzzword in horticulture at the moment, we're currently only at the beginning of the technological learning curve. We still don't fully understand everything about what it takes for a plant to grow and thrive. As the industry develops, we are sure to make further advancements around what's needed for a plant's ideal growing conditions. So, to conclude, there is no doubt that we are facing severe problems with our current food system. Reimagining food production that is affordable, sustainable and feasible will be necessary to give food access to everybody. The benefits are clear. It uses less space and less water than traditional farming. It isn't dependent on the weather and it can be set up anywhere in the world. However, as of now, it is not the complete solution. The range of crops it can feasibly grow is limited and they require a lot of energy. That said, the foundations are in place and the cost of infrastructure is coming down. Seeds are being optimized for vertical farming and funding is being made available. If we can couple this with the continued influx of talent into the space, we can expect to see major advancements in the near future. If you want to be kept up to date with what's new in vertical farming, subscribe to Food Verge now. Leave us a comment and let us know what food trend you'd like us to cover next. If you enjoyed this video, then give this video a like. We'll have new videos coming every week in 2022. And if you'd like to learn more about some of the hottest food trends, sign up to our free trend reports on ghost kitchens, vertical farming and more. You can check out the link in our description. Absolutely free. Until next time, ciao ciao. Oh, 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 oh,